and then I can also start recording on audio over here. All right. Uh, yeah, we are live. All right, so hopefully everyone can hear. I have you right next to the mic and um, still getting uh, messages. But um, yeah, so we got some time. This is called Deliver Deliverance from Us. And um, my brother has a testimony. And it's just like God is doing some similar things with us. So I wanted you to uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit, and then we're going to get into this. I want to ask you some things about, about this big deliverance that happened late 2020. Go ahead. All right, cool. Well, my name is Avedon Smith, and, you know, it's my, my cousin invited me on. And I'll just say the Lord has been purging me of many things that I intensely enjoyed since childhood. And it's almost like it's a new walk of life, but it's one that I'm privileged to walk in. I, and that's that's the amazing part where you're talking about. It's a privilege to walk in this because um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Avedon and I, we played video games since like the womb. OK, so we were I, we specialized. I specialized in a lot of the violent games. Wait. Are you, are you live? So, I sure am. Doesn't Could, show you live on your on your page. It doesn't show live on the page. Nope. It says one thirty, one forty. Yep, been live for about a little bit. So not sure if uh, anyone is connected yet. Yeah, it says live. It probably oh, wow, is just going to take a while to get in. Yeah, it's like I literally went to your your front page and like it's your last it's your last post I've been shown. Okay, well it says I've been live for two minutes on this thing. So we wanna keep that. Let me make sure wow. I move this back to the mic. Facebook's lying. I'm live over here, you can't see me. No, nah, like I saw when you was live when I went to your thing and it's like I lost the like I got the tag. Okay, now I see it. I see it now. There we go. I see it. I, I wanted to share it. I wanted to share it out. That's why. Okay. All right. Well, let me um, yeah. let me delete the audio and then we can start that over. I'm not going to restart my live, but I am going okay. to restart the audio. No, it's all good. And we'll just cut out the audio next. You know, in a few. Yeah. No, it's all. But good. you're gonna have to reintroduce yourself. <laughs> Wait, I gotta reintroduce myself? Yes, you do, because the, we gotta do it for the audio. We got the video. People heard you on the video, but we gotta do it on the audio. Okay. Let me know when you're ready, because I wanna. Cause I'll I'm hit, ready. Are oh, you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm hitting record on the audio. All right, cool. All right, so All right, take so. two, take two. All right, so um, <laughs> right now <laughs> we have here um, my cousin. He's, he, he says cousin, but we're, we're brothers. So um, you get Absolutely. that next week. Um, we, are. we have, this is called Deliver Us, Deliverance from Us. And uh, it's an amazing testimony that um, my brother had, what the Lord is doing and did at close to the end of 2020. And it was so similar to what was going on, but I don't want to ruin it. So just tell us, tell us first, tell us who you are, introduce yourself, and then give a little bit about this. And I'm going to ask you about this testimony, and hopefully it's going to encourage a lot of other people who went through similar things in 2020. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So as uh, as my cousin introduced, my name is um, Avedon Smith, and we are, as he said, we're brothers, and we've been on similar journeys since. For a while now, but it really came to a head towards the end of 2020, mm -hmm. and it really just sparked a change, you know, for us. It really just sparked a change, you know, for me to have the privilege to walk in this because there was things as he mentioned, uh, video games, anime, comic books, all of these things 
we intensely jo- enjoyed since childhood. And God has been purging me to walk away from all these things. And it's, it's, it's a privilege. That's the best way I can put it. It's a privilege to walk away from these things because now I see these things for what they are. Amazing. Amazing. And that's what, you know, I had said it on the um, on the previous take that we pretty much been on game since the womb. I mean, um, we got some people joining in, too. All right. Much love to all of you. Uh, So we specialized. I know that I did uh, specialized in in the violent games. Okay, the the Street Fighters, the Mortal Kombat's. You know, you always have your Super Mario and the little things like that, which people, you know, enjoy a lot now. But there was also a very violent portion of it, you know, um, where the purpose of the game is to either knock the person unconscious or kill them. And the better you do that, the higher your score. So, you know, we studied these things. And and I know that personally, that's what I love to do. I love to to study, we were tournament level worthy. There are now, um, you know, they have tournaments where it wasn't as big back then, but now you play these tournaments and and if you get high enough in the tournament, you get money. So these are the types of things that we were good at. We were very good at these types of things and even so much so into our Christianity, we didn't give any of these things up. As a matter of fact, even though we were Christian, when we met up after so many years, I think we were apart, what, like 15 years, something like that? We didn't see each other? The first thing we did was play Smash Bros. The first thing that we did was play Super Smash Bros. I mean, the first thing that we did. We we were talking about how we were Christian, you know, we've given our life to Jesus. Yet when we meet after 15 some odd years, the first thing that we do is put on Smash Brothers. You know, so um, we, we just, that bond had not left. Even though we hadn't seen each other since, like, we were like, 12 or something, you know, so, um, and neither of us were, were talking Christian at that time. You know, I, I was hardcore uh, agnostic, and I say agnostic only because I would have been atheist, but I was too afraid to die, you know, so um, I didn't want to die and go to hell, so I did everything that I possibly could to just basically not go to hell, but I still, it got to a point where, you know, I was cursing God, and there were very similar testimonies, but this video game thing, we were so deep into it but tell us around the, close to the end of 2020, something started happening to you. What what happened? Tell us about that. Well, I'll say more so I've been taking the time to just read my Bible more. Hmm. And it started, I want to say, in September. Like September, I just, I just started reading my Bible. It started when the Lord led me to start reading the Bible from Genesis. And this is actually before September because, you know, I was texting my brother and my, my other brother. We have a group check. I was texting things about Noah at the time, things about Joseph. It's like so many things that, they, that God is sharing with me. I'm, you know, just sharing with them. And literally after that, it started going towards where well, I started getting an exodus. And it was kind of cathartic for me because the place of exodus where I wasn't understanding God like years ago, a few years ago, about two, three years ago, and I was just putting my own interpretation, I was literally going to levels of saying like certain interpretations worded that wrong because that doesn't match with God's character and not seeing that's a form of pride Mm. and the Lord showed me um (laughs) the Lord showed the Lord showed me more and more and um while we did Exodus about false gods and idols and then I just started taking more of a note of that but I started reading Leviticus when I started reading, even getting in Deuteronomy, that's where they really started to hit home, especially when I was reading Deuteronomy. And I just started to feel naturally like, yo, I don't want to play this because if something is not glorifying God, it's glorifying something. There. And 
the Lord is clear. If you're not for me, you're against me. So then it's like, when my music changed, like my media started to change, it's like, I didn't feel comfortable uh, wanna, to want to watch Naruto anymore. I didn't feel comfortable to want to watch Demon Slayer no more. I didn't feel comfortable... Um, I didn't even feel comfortable to even want to play a lot of uh, violent video games. Mm-hmm. And then Smash Bros. I just started feeling like, you know what? I don't want to play Smash Bros. because I don't like the person I become when I become competitive. That's something that I saw in myself. I don't like the over-competitive nature. I said, there's something that's not spiritual about that. It's something that I feel it doesn't line up with how God desires us to be. Like God is, he says, let your yes be yes, your no be no meaning. Don't switch up for another season. Don't switch it up just because the circumstance is different. So let your yes be yes, your no be no. Do you support this or not? So. Uh, and with that, I've, I've got to, to, to cut in on this one because um, before we even get to the Smash Brothers, it's amazing. You said a lot of things about as far as you were going through Genesis and, and then Exodus and Leviticus. What's really amazing is that first, I had started this similar journey before you, right? Like, remember, yep. for those of you who don't know, I have a video on my YouTube channel about quitting specifically Super Smash Brothers. And yep. Uh, on the video, I didn't want to condemn anyone, but I did talk about how the new Super Smash Brothers, the or, uh, Smash Ultimate is what it's called, and it's actually an affront to God. They actually take the story that was happening with Noah, and I shouldn't say story because when you say story in 2021, people think that it's false. But we can use account. Yeah, the account of Noah, and they actually twist it to make God the bad guy and tell you to inhabit spirits. This game tells your children to take on spirits in order to get powers to fight God. That's that's what the game is. So it's not the same cute, and this is Super Mario's in it, and, and you know, um, Luigi and Bowser and, and all of these cute beings, and but they also have everybody else in it now. It's not It's not a game with the eight Nintendo characters you know, that, that used to be there. There's like, what, 70 something? So by now, the the game has got has grown to a point to where the story mode uh, uh, has gotten to a place to where you actually take on the spirit, like, because it's called World of Light. And, um, and, and in this World of Light, you actually have these, this being in the sky that has six wings. It's a seraphim, okay? And the seraphim releases light, and the light destroys every body okay but your characters are the good guys you know you've got your sonic the hedgehog and you've got your zelda and mario and all the so they lose their bodies but their spirits are still floating around and what you do because one escaped okay kirby escapes you then as kirby have to go around and get the characters their bodies back and in order to do this you have to actually attach spirits to yourself to gain powers to do it. So they're encouraging you to basically be possessed. That's what it is. So um, so the thing is, is that I did a video on that and I had known for years that I was going to quit video games, but it was coming so slowly. It was coming slowly. I would bail out, I would bail out and then come back and then play some video games. And then I would bail out for months and then come back. And, and I would bail out and then come back. But I knew from before I was even married when uh, I was actually, I was playing, and this is a testament to my wife is watching. Um, before we were even married, I was playing Capcom versus SNK. And uh, one of my favorite characters, and this is gonna go along with the testimony, is Terry Bogard. He was one of my favorite characters, the first fighting game that I played. I played Terry Bogard in Fatal Fury before I played Street Fighter, okay? I played this before, and then the first game that I played for Super Nintendo was Final Fight, okay, so with Cody. So um, I'm here, you got the blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, um, white t-shirt thing going on, beating people up, and when I was playing, I was using Terry Bogard, and I was fighting Ken Masters from Street Fighter, 
And I'm playing as Terry Bogard, and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she looks at Terry Bogard, and she's like, that's Ken from Street Fighter, right? And when she had said that, it was just, it hit me plain as day. You're only going to be playing video games so much longer because the love of your life can't tell the difference between Terry Bogard and Ken Masters. She thinks that because they both wear red that they're the same guy. So I was like, it's only a matter of time. And it took years, almost a decade though, but I'm here and I'm like, I'm quitting games. And now I made a video about Super Smash Brothers. And you didn't agree with it. Tell, tell us, what, what happened I, with I, that? I'm going to say, I'm going to get right on that. I did not agree with it. In fact, we had a very respectful conversation, and I want to get to his credit. He was very humble about it. He says, no, I'm not saying put down Super Smash Brothers. I'm saying where I'm at and the revelation God gave me with this. And you said, and you said, there may be a time, and you said, there may be a time where you can put it down. I'm not saying you, you have to, but there may be a time. It's like as we continue to walk, we're going to just start putting some things aside. And you gave the scripture, lay aside every sin and weight that holds us back. At that time, I don't know if you remember, you gave that scripture with that. Hmm. So, and that's why, that's why I was like, I, I had to add to your testimony now because like you, Terry Bogart being one of your favorite characters, that broke my mind. <laughs> and, and it's like, I did not even notice how demonic the trailer was, but the nostalgia factor caught me off guard. And get this, everybody. I said three days prior that, you know what, I'm done with Super Smash Bros. I'm quitting. And I said that only to a few people. Literally three days later, they announced, they announced one of my favorite characters of all time in the game, and I predicted him being the game four years ago. Well, and I, I want to hit on that. I do want to hit on that because people don't know that happened with me as well. After I made my video about Super Smash Brothers and I was quitting and I, and I did a video on it, it's in my YouTube channel, I, I, I talked about the demonics of it and how even my 10-year-old son at the time, uh, well, he was, uh, I think he was nine at the time when I, when I bought it. He turned 10 like, like a week later. But... Um, mm -hmm. He, he, had, he was wondering why we're still playing this game with the spirits. Well, we're just not going to, to play the spirit part, right? But even my son was convicted because he knew that we didn't stand for those types of things. We didn't allow those types of things in the house. So why are you allowing this? And the reason that I was allowing it was because it's such a fun game to play. The entertainment levels on games have not gone down. OK, the, the entertainment They've levels haven't gone down. They've gone up. But the amount of, of sorcery and, and murder and vile, disgusting, they put like lewd sex in them now, all types of things. So it's just like in order to be entertained, I was allowing this sorcery to be in my house. And even my son was wondering what was going on. So um, uh, when I finally deleted it, he was actually like, I was waiting for you to delete it, but I was just going along with you. So we even lead our kids astray by allowing certain Amen. things to, to happen. But just like you, Sephiroth was on it, because I'm a, I'm a little older than Abaddon, you guys. I'm about, what, three or four, four, four years right. older, three years older. So um, <laughs> when I was playing Terry Bogard in 1992, Abaddon comes along three or four years later with Sephiroth in 1996. When I made my video, you guys, this is no joke. When I made my video about Super Smash Brothers and quit, within a month or so, Terry Bogard was released as downloadable content for Super Smash Brothers. And I was just like, how is it that the one character that, that it, it was as if Satan knew this is somebody who Yofi loves, he loves this guy. He played this guy, this is the first fighting game. The nostalgia factor is gonna get him the same way that it got him with Link with Legend of Zelda, the same way that it got him with Sonic when we released Sonic on the Wii, we're gonna get this guy back. Because if it wasn't Terry Bogard, it was Sonic the Hedgehog. Because I was, I was bailing, out, bailing out of video games and then when Smash Brothers for the Wii came out, they put Sonic the Hedgehog on it. I bought a Wii, okay, so I had to get it back. And then on um, the Wii U, who did they release? Ryu from Street Fighter and Cloud from Final Fantasy. So I had to get a Wii U. 
you know, and then after uh, Ultimate, I even got that back. I got the Switch, and I'm still supposed to be bailing out of video games, right? But I, I quit. I left because this is an affront to God. It's direct. It's, it's blatant. I leave. Terry Bogard gets released for uh, downloadable content. And so I release, you know, I release this video and, and I can't go back to this. Terry Bogard is the ultimate temptation. I don't even want to watch a video because I know that I'll download it back. Right. So that happens. But you get convicted. You're starting to tell me things like in Genesis that I even I'm like, I don't even agree with this. And, and we're getting into debates like, you know, what's going on? What is this guy talking about? And then you and then Smash Brothers, you finally quit. And three days later, they release Sephiroth. Like, like the same exact way that Satan wants to drag me back, he came to drag you back once you got the revelation years later. And, 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 that's, and that's the amazing part. Go ahead. And that's the part I want you to add with that, man. It's like the trailer for Step Up was really demonic. Because like, as you said, the Sephiroth and the Six Wing, literally, it's about to take all the... Um, Smash those characters and step off cuts them in half. Wow. And I'm I'm like, wow. And it's almost like it's in a sense and you need to see if you look at people's reactions towards it. It's like the Lord showed me and this is how the Lord got me back immediately. The Lord is so beautiful how he gets us back. Even though the Lord knew that I'll get excited about that, even though the Lord knew that I was good, I verbally said the next time I'm out, but I'm still not buying the game. And the Lord honored that by showing me, he says, now I want you to see something. He had me watch other people's reactions. And it's like, I was able to see what he saw. People were literally, wow. like, the looks on people's face. I'm like, well, is that how we look when we're looking at other things? Yes. The level of all we give to anything other than him. I'm not going to just put it down to video games. But we give that level of awe and, like, some people had looks of fear. Some people got very emotional. When we give those levels of emotions towards inanimate objects, it's a direct correlation to how the children of Israel were worshiping idols in the, in the, in the Old Testament. And, and, and we really and, want to get on that, the, the idols about it, the idols, the idolatry, because... I'm going to give a testimony, and I, and I want you to, to talk about this, because it, the timing was amazing that God revealed this to you, even with Sephiroth, because before Sephiroth came out, and before you even received this revelation, at the same exact time, there was a sort of, I'll call it like a backsliding on my end, because my older son came home, and he came home with us for a while, and in order to appease him, I allowed him to download Smash Brothers back. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't very interested, you know, like I know where, where I stand. But in order to do that, do you know that Smash Brothers took over my house? Smash Brothers took over my house. It took over all the time. We used to play certain games with our kids and things like that. But then my younger son didn't want to play those anymore. He just wanted to play Smash Brothers with his older brother. So his interest in, in reading, his interest in the word, his interest in praying, all of this, all of that stuff went out the door. And in order to hype it up, uh, um, the game, it downloaded all of the stuff back, right? So not just the game, not just the 60 some odd characters, but Banjo-Kazooie, uh, uh, um, not Corrin, what's the other Fire Emblem characters? I don't know them all by name because I never uh... played Fire Emblem. The, the, yep, the one, I, I, yeah, the, they, the, all of them, okay? But along with the Fire Emblem characters and Banjo-Kazooie, guess who else was downloadable content who came into my house? Terry Bogard. Terry Bogard. Now, just by me watching that, do you know the thought came into my head? Well, you know, you, you, you've got your son here and it's spending time with your son. You know that you don't really care. OK, so in order to spend time and you say I put quotes on that, if you're looking at the video in order to spend time with my sons, I'm here playing as Terry Bogart and Terry Bogart. You have to do the commands, the video game commands, all that stuff. Mind you, I became within like two weeks the straight beast that I used to be like within two weeks. 
it got to a point to where I was playing without them because I got to practice. What are you practicing for, Yofi? What are you practicing for? A tournament? What are you practicing for? So worse than that, my son who was 10, okay, he couldn't really use Terry the right way. So in order to show him that he's using Terry wrong, we got a King of Fighters game. That's what Terry Bogard's in. Every year they release a new King of Fighters. So we got him for the old PlayStation, the PlayStation 2 and all of that. So before you knew it, within... That's just a... That's an announcement. All right, before you knew it, we had, and some of you might know these, we had King of Fighters from the year 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. These are all different titles, okay? 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, okay? Um, 98, Ultimate Match. We had Capcom vs. SNK. Um, we, had, we had well over $300 in fighting games in our house. Now, these are all games that cost like 10, 15 bucks each. We had Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. We had Tekken 4, Tekken 5, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi 3, which cost well over $100. That game is not easy to find. We had all of these things in the house within like weeks. All of this stuff was in the house. And the Lord had showed me that within, like he said, there's witchcraft in your house. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, you, in order to spend time with your son, have allowed so many demonic spirits to come in and overtake your house. And he said, that's why your younger son is losing interest in the gospel. And that's why your older son is not having any interest when you go and pray. Because you have not shown him that your life has changed. Your life did change. But when he came back, you pulled a Peter in Galatians and started sitting back with the old Jews. You're, you're sitting back with the Jews. It didn't hinder you, but it hindered them. And it led them astray. And I had to get rid of all of it. I took all of those games. I took all of them. All the money. I didn't sell them to get some money from them. I threw them out. I said they need to go. Okay. Ironically. I had a uh, and, that, and that's exactly. Ironically, when I called you to tell you about it, you told me what? Good job. Yeah. And what was happening with you? What was happening with you? Like, literally, after that, because a few days, it didn't happen at that time, because you told me about that, and then you told me about another testimony, which I'm going to respect for you not to get it. You told me about that, but then I kept that in mind. And then when that step off thing came to mind, what you did came to my mind. And the Lord told me to do the same. I had a Final Fantasy seven Deluxe Edition, like, perfect condition. It was open, but it was in perfect condition, Deluxe. They had, like, an art book in there, a steel book case. A music soundtrack, everything. Picked it up, threw it in the trash. I got all my physical Switch games, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart, uh, even Monster Hunter, one that I really enjoyed, threw it away. Went through all of my, um, hey, how you doing? Um, went through uh, all of my um, older, all my games on my downloaded list, down, got rid of all my downloaded games off my computer, off my Switch. And the reason being is like, even games like Animal Crossing, because I would say, you know what, I'll even say games like Donkey Kong. People would think like, how is Donkey, what's wrong with Donkey Kong? And I'm like, that, that has um, Egyptian mysticism influences in it. That's still going against God. And it's like, we really have to look at it at the demons that are in there. Even the best example is one that Yofi showed me. It's like, if you show somebody uh, the demonic pentagram, it will look demonic, it will scare a lot of people. But if you show someone a yellow Mario 64 star, they will not feel threatened. And that's the thing. The people, that's what the kingdom of darkness is doing in a lot of our children's shows, a lot of our children's cartoons. They are making demons look cute and harmless and that is the deception 
they look cute and harmless, but they're not. And that's that's it right there. What we had realized that as God is purging me of so many things, he's doing the same thing with my brother up north. Now, mind you, we're states away. We're not even in the same state. We get to see each other maybe once a year. OK, mm-hmm. and the same thing God is purging in 2020 him. God's purging me. All right. It, it's it's amazing because there was and he, he called about it a testimony. So I have to give this one. OK. I had a story that I wrote. I've written several things because I'm more of a writer. I, I loved uh, my wife will tell you if we ever see a film, which I don't really watch films anymore. But if I saw a film, if I see a Christian movie, it doesn't matter. My wife knows that when she goes to bed, I'm going to go and watch the movie again with the commentary. I want to hear what the directors say. I want to see the behind the scenes. I wanted to know how they made the sounds in the movies. I wanted to know all of these things. I was so very involved in it to the point to where when I was about 17 years old, I started my own novel. And the reason I started it, and this is a testimony, now I have to give it because you, you brought it up, brother. Um, when, when, uh, when I started this, I started this in high school because I didn't want to go to class. Um, I wasn't a very good, I, I wasn't a Christian when I was in high school. So um, <laughs> I wasn't very good. I skipped school a lot. I, I was bad. So in chemistry class, I didn't want to pay attention because we weren't blowing things up. It was just a bunch of math. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, like, so I started creating these characters because I started uh, a game. I would always like make games. When Super Smash Brothers came out, I had already made Super Smash Brothers Melee. I put Zelda in the game and I gave her a a move list. I put Banjo-Kazooie in the game, gave him a move list. I did all types of things. And then when Capcom vs. SNK came out, I made a, a newer game called SNK versus Square. It was Square Soft at the time. And I had the, the move list. I put people's move lists in it. I wrote a story for it. I mean, Cloud versus Terry. I did all types of things. So Cloud versus Terry didn't just happen to Smash Ultimate. I had that idea in 1999. Okay. So it, it's just like all of these things, I, w- I was writing about it. It was about 50 some pages long. I had move lists, I had story. And I sent it to Capcom because I was just like, SNK is going out of business, but you have permission to use their characters. So get with Square and do this game. I sent them an email. I got an email back from them that said that I need to go to college, get in the company, and then we'll talk. And uh, a friend of mine, an older gentleman, when I told him about it, that about how I was rejected, he said, you, you better be thankful that Capcom even emailed you back. That should let you know that it was good. You know, so he's like, they, they shouldn't, they don't even email fan mail back like that. So he's just like, you need to be thankful that, that they told you to do that and they didn't just steal your idea, you know? So, um, which they could have. Yeah, which they could have, right? So, cause I didn't have it copyrighted, it was a Microsoft Word file, right? So when I got rejected, I was so upset that I just said, I'm gonna write my own. And I wrote my own story. It was like a hundred some pages long, I mean, line after line, characters that I basically stolen from other places, but I revamped them, which is what characters are. People think that things are new. They're not new. They're just things that are influenced by other things. So I wrote this, yeah, yeah, that's a different story, isn't it? (laughs) So I've got this story, and even after I got saved, uh, I was 18 years old, I got saved because one of the school psychologists that I was just going to to skip school, he actually told me about the Lord, and he told me about how God didn't hate me and um, I gave my life to Christ that day. Uh, meanwhile, I went back out and smoked weed the, that night. Uh, but, you know, I had no knowledge of it. But I kept this story. But in 2020, this is after I spend thousands of dollars to get this story up. This story is now its own universe by now. I have well over a thousand pages worth of story. Uh, characters developed. They are nothing like when they first originally started. They don't have their original names. I mean, they have character. It's so good that I had kids in my teaching class reading this, kids who don't normally read, wanted to read this. Okay, so it was very good. But it got to a point I was watching a preach and I understood God revealed to me right then and there that as good as your story is and as much as you revamped it and as much as me 
as you have put into this story, the foundation of it is witchcraft. The foundation of it is sorcery. The foundation of it is the pentagram and the hexagram, the Baphomet, all of that. He's like, that's your foundation. So he said, no matter how big this story gets and no matter how much Jesus you put in here, it is ritually and literally unclean because you are mixing what Satan is using with me. And I got rid of it. I got rid of this was 17 years worth of stuff. I have gotten I got rid of it. I got rid of every copy that I could find. I'm pretty sure that there's something floating around cyberspace somewhere. I got rid of all the art. You know, um, the artists who did work for me on DeviantArt, they still have the rights to those characters, I guess, because I didn't, you know, but all of it, over $2,000 worth of stuff and over 17 years worth of material, I had to get rid of because God was like, you are using what Satan is using in order to get godly things. And he's like, no matter how much you take out of it, Yofi, no matter how much you take out, because I took out so many demonic things, but he said, no matter how much you take out the foundation of it, is wrong. And I'm like, God, all this time, it took me 17 and a half years to realize that this thing in my life, forget all of the other things, forget Smash Brothers and all of these things, but the thing in my life that I didn't see, the foundation of it was wicked. And I was just like, God, this is the best that I could do with a story. And he said, it is the best that you can do, but it's the best that you can do. He said, we'll write a better story. And I'm like, how? And he said, walk with me. Walk with me in that area in your life that you have never given me. You know, mind you, I got the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. I could do cartwheels around the church. I lay hands on the sick. I have seen fibromyalgia, diabetes, cancers. My wife has prayed, uh, um, mental retardation leave. We've seen it all. But in this area of my life, God did not have, uh, um, he did not have, a uh, 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 say so in he didn't have a say so in that one area you see so I got rid of all of those things and right then and there he also told me about the witchcraft so I got rid of the Terry Bogard again the the Smash Brothers M mind you Smash Brothers was already gone because after King of Fighters and Street Fighter came in my house my son didn't want to play Smash Brothers anymore he wanted the real stuff okay so I got rid of $300 were the video games. I got rid of 17 and a half years worth of music of, uh, because I still would listen to Michael Jackson, okay? That is heavily demonic, for those of you who don't know. Michael Jackson's music is heavily demonic, okay? I didn't even see it. But after I got rid of that one, one thing in my life, Avedon, when I got rid of that, I started seeing, I was just like, I never saw how demonic Michael Jackson was. I never saw how demonic certain things were because that one spot kept me blind to so many other things in life. And that's what happened. So when I gave you that testimony, then all of a sudden you with Smash Brothers, like, like go ahead, tell us more yeah. about how, like what other video games and other things in your life. Cause the same thing happened to you, didn't it? It wouldn't be just Smash Brothers, just to add to everything you're saying, cause your testimony blessed me. And then it's like, what are you just Smash Brothers? I just started seeing more and more of the worship of other gods and the thing is, it's like, even music, I started even wanting to study more of God, like how, what is your design for music? Like as someone who is able to be gifted to make music, what is your design for this Lord? I don't want to just do this just for the sake of doing it. I want to be more intentional. I've been becoming more intentional about artwork, uh, sculpting and everything. I want to make sure this is glorifying him because we have gotten into a world in not glorifying him. We've gotten into a world that it, it feels uncomfortable for so many people to keep God first or say, well, God's included in this or God's included in that or God, God is here with that. It is so uncomfortable for people to do that. Hmm. And it's sad because a lot of people, they don't want to give up. Like, a lot of people don't want to give up like they're Michael Jackson's. A lot of people, listen, I'm going I'm to hit home. A lot of people don't want to give, give up listening to the Ivy Bros. A lot of people don't want to give up listening to Boys to Men. A lot of Ooh. people don't want to give up listening. 
You you stepping on some toes, man. I, we we got to put that. We got to do that. I already did enough by saying Michael Jackson now, brother. You can't. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I have. Cause listen, 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 listen. Soul music. The soul music definition by by definition. You can look up the Google definition of soul music. It should, it should say something. It is secular music with gospel sound, with gospel inspired style. So it's gospel is singing with secular lyrics. And right. it's like, what does the Bible say about the mixing? Like God. That, get on that. Stop right there. That's it right there. The mixing. Okay. When Aaron, and you read this in Leviticus, when Aaron's sons mixed what was secular with what was holy, God the called strange it fire. strange fire, and they dropped dead, okay? So, um, I'm doing a recording. Is it, is it, is it? Okay. So, um, what happened is, is that it was called a strange fire, and they dropped dead. All right. Now, also, what the reason as to why strange fire is so strange, OK, because the word strange doesn't really mean much. We say Dr. Strange. We think that that's a superhero. The reason why it was strange is because it was unclean. Now, that's a word that people don't use a lot of. They think of uncleanliness, but it's not uncleanliness. It's uncleanness. Uncleanness. The, for, let me tell you this. The reason as to why, and this is for the viewers, you know this already, but the reason as to why they were called unclean spirits is because back in Genesis chapter 6, you had the fallen sons of God who mixed, they were, they were darkness, and they mixed with human beings who God has called holy. We're supposed to be in the image of God. So they mixed humans and these dark beings together and made demonic bastard children called Nephilim. Now, the Nephilim spirits, which is what Super Smash Brothers mocks, those are the spirits who were the heroes of the day. Your Spider-Mans, your, your, your Iron Man, your, all of these heroes, they were actually Nephilim. They were demigods. They were Hercules. They were all of these beings that were heroes. Okay, and people still look to them as heroes. People look to Michael Jackson as a hero. People look to all of these music artists as heroes when you don't even understand that they're taking on spirits of things that are way older than you and me. But God called them unclean spirits because they were mixtures. That's why they were unclean. So when you have a mixture of, of this and, and this evil and then this holiness and you try to make it holy, it's actually a bastard holy living. It's not real holiness. It's not real. And we think that God has to accept that when we already know from, uh, um, from Isaac and Ishmael. God accepted Isaac, not Ishmael. Even though Ishmael had the better mother because, because uh, Hagar wasn't as mean as Sarah, Hagar didn't laugh at God, Hagar was younger, Hagar was Egyptian, so she was beautiful. That's my bias right there, okay? She was Egyptian, so she was beautiful. Yet God said, I'm going to take the 90-year-old uh, um, uh, uh, barren woman. I'm going to take the 90-year-old barren woman, and I'm going to do something. Why? Because it's pure. And that's what we don't see about this. We don't see, we think it's just Spider-Man. Well, did you know that Spider-Man is a psychic? You know what it is to be a psychic? That means that you call on demon spirits to give you the future. It's not a word of prophecy that Spider-Man gets. It's a psychic twitch. So I'm like, there are so many things that, that and you're dressing your son up like that. You're dressing your, your daughter up like these, like these spirits. Okay, so it's just like, there's so much. I'm sorry, I go on a, on a rant, brother, I'm sorry. But when you said strange no. and unclean, that's exactly what it is. It's a mixture. And uh, no, you're good. I, I wouldn't just even add to what you're saying, man, because what a lot of people don't see about them being unclean Talk to, that's what Jesus talks about in Matthew 12, and that's where you're serving other gods. The serving of other gods comes from the, the intake of these unclean spirits and not allowing the Holy Spirit to reside in us and reside in all of us. Because in many cases, we're only giving God our burnt offerings. We're only giving God our sin. 
God is God doesn't just want the bad sides of us and just hey take 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 the trash out, Lord. Like that's how we've been we've been treating the Lord for, for we just you know take the bad sides of me. But you know my my entertainment, my sense of humor, what makes me laugh, what makes me smile, what makes me cry, Lord. I want to keep those things. Mm-hmm. You know my love life and everything. Things that happen behind closed doors, I, I want to keep that for myself, Lord. Uh, the types of music I listen to, Lord, I want to keep. I want to keep I, that. I wanna, yeah, I want to keep we, that. We want to keep that, and it's like we don't understand that we are day by day showing that we're acting more like Cain than Abel. We're giving God unholy sacrifices. We're not giving God the, the best sacrifices of ourselves. And when we show, like, we're really the seed, the true seed of Abraham. You need to be the true seed of Abraham. You have to do what Abel did at the beginning and give God your first fruits. Abraham gave God the first fruits to Melchizedek with the spoils of war. Mm. He gave him everything. That's what that represented. From the spoils of war that he took Lot out, he did not take anything from himself. He gave that back to God which is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to give everything towards him. Right. And what Cain did, Cain just figured that he could just give some vegetables to God, and that's not even what, uh, what God desires, because vegetables, people don't know this. A lot of people, the, our Christianity is so watered down, man. You wouldn't even like, we don't even like watered down Kool-Aid, but we like watered down Christianity, and it's really, it's really bad, because the gospel is written so many times in Genesis, so many times in Genesis. By the time you get to Genesis 11, the gospel has already been preached three times. Like, it is just yeah. so amazing, at least three times. But the thing is, is this, is that when you have Cain and Abel, well, God didn't accept Cain's offering. We don't know why. Well, he didn't accept Cain's offering because if you read Genesis 1 and 2, it tells you that plants are not alive. They're not alive, okay? Okay. They're, they're not. There's a religion that tries to worship plants and stuff, you know, like your poison ivy or Batman or something like that. I don't know what's I don't know what I, I'm I don't I don't get in all that. What, what it is, is, is that plants are not actually alive. So how is that a sacrifice? How is it a sacrifice if the person is, is not alive when animal blood needed to be when blood needed to be shed for Adam and Eve's sin? It was a live animal that needed to die. That's what the sacrificial system is. But you've got people offering things that are not live as a sacrifice. That's why we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Money is not a sacrifice. Presenting money is not a sacrifice. People are like, I'm going to give a sacrificial offering of, of $50. That's not a sacrifice because money is not alive. Sacrifice has to be you. So the only sacrifice that I gave God within this area, it took me 17 and a half years to give God a sacrifice because it was me it was me that i was giving up and then god was able to do things okay but and with you it was the video games and then when you give that up what happens oh let's offer him something else let's offer him something to get him back into it you see and this is what the kids are going through it's in the comments you can't see the comments but i even said these are the kids. When you raise kids up this way, that generation was raised up so much so that look at the fighting that was going on in Washington. You really think that that was Jesus? I was just like, that you really think, oh, Donald Trump is evil. Donald Trump's not evil. You are. You know, Joe I, Biden's not evil. I, you are. I made a post about that yesterday, and a lot of people may not like, like him. I actually got to go, so I got to get ready for work. But, uh, <laughs> um, one thing a lot of people don't want to hear, attitude reflects leadership. Like, the reflection of the leader of the country often reflects the people. And, and I say that because when Barack Obama was in place, you can say what we want about, but he respected integrity and respect for a while. And for the good part, I could say from 2008 to 2015, 2016, that's how people treated each other. A lot of people desire to treat each other, for the most part. You saw more respect. There was some hiccups there, but there was a difference when you had, like, the police brutality uh, instances when Barack Obama was in office. There was more people unified to say, hey, this needs to stop, mm -hmm. in a sense. Versus now, 
when that was happening during uh, Trump's time from like 2016 to 2020, there was a lot of people pointing fingers at each other and no one took accountability for themselves. And although, like, I'm not a Trump supporter or anything, I don't say everything he does is wrong. I don't say everything he does is right. You know, I look at everything and you judge accordingly. But one thing I did see was, I, one thing I did see that he did not take accountability or say that he was wrong or, mm-hmm. or, or something. No, and, and people would use that as an excuse. Now, this is not a bash Trump segment, you guys. Please don't yeah, think that. It's not. What, what, I, what we are saying is that, because um, there were a lot of ups as well, okay? Trump did a lot of things well. But as far as taking yeah. accountability, he didn't really do that. So I will yeah. say this, though. I will say this, because you're on, this is Yofi's time, so it's just like you got to do this. You'll hear this from Yofi and Avedon. Trump fought more for Christians than any other president in history. Oh, yeah in history however the reason that trump and this is this is my personal thing the reason that i believe trump never took accountability is because i didn't i didn't take accountability on this story that i was running i didn't take accountability on these blind areas i did not allow god into that part of my life i'm laying hands i'm doing a lot of good for christians but I did not take accountability in that part of my life. Now, if we don't take accountability in those parts of our lives, why are you upset that this guy, who, by the way, is not a real Christian, he's not, a, he's not, well, if he's Christian, I believe that he said that he was Christian when he was running for president. So this guy's a new Christian. This guy's a new Christian. I was a Christian for 17 and a half years before I allowed God to get one part of my life. Now, you weren't Christian as long as I was, so it took years for you to allow God into one part of your life. You see that? And so I'm like, who are we to expect more from him? How are we to expect from him what we won't do ourselves? And that's why I was like, we have to keep our mouth off. That's where, and that's where you, 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 you hit the nail on the head. And that's where I was at with this. It's like, the accountability factor is reflective. Now, yes, he did show that, but I'm like, every every time we speak against him, I'm like, but what are we doing to help the problem? What we're posting on Facebook we? about how evil he is so that we can make ourselves look better in comparison. That's what we're doing. But and, we go to and, church on Sunday what? and we shout, though. We speak but in you. tongues, though. So that means that we're the good Christian and he's not. Hey, but you know what? You know what the sad. You know what? You know what? Sadly, what that shows. That's being accused of the brethren. Oh, a, a look, brother, brother. That is a different topic, brother. Oh man, because we're getting we're getting too far into it. We have to end this podcast. Look, we've been. It, it's fifty two minutes. We were supposed to go a little bit, but we have to get back, you guys. So we're going to have to cut it. But we will leave it right there. And I would like to, if you could, brother, if we could do this again and hit on that very same topic as as far as that is actually being an accuser of the brethren. There are a lot of Christians right now who look a lot more like the devil than they do God. And it is because, and I will admit, because this was about testimony and encouragement, I was that same one. I may not have been doing it on Facebook. I may not have been doing it on Facebook, but in my life, because I did not take accountability on those parts, but I could be very emotional. I could speak in tongues and I could run around the church. I could do that. I could still do that. However, because of those things, I expected certain people to be better because they weren't as good in the areas that I was good in. You see that? And that's what I believe our testimony was about, bro. To even add to that, man. You know how many times lately, as of late, I've been, the Lord has been treating me harder than he has ever been. The Lord has been saying, why are you talking so much? And I haven't been, oh, I'm not talking oh, to you. Yes, you are. That's and me. you're talking about the <laughs> thoughts that are in my head. I mm. was like, Well, well, wow. say that again. Say that again. I'm going to give that to you. You said, why are you talking so much? And what did the Lord rebuke you on? What did he say? The Lord is saying, why am I talking so much? And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then I was thinking, like, am I talking? I wasn't physically speaking, but I'm having thoughts go through my head as I'm reading through, like, different posts on everything on, on, like, social media. 
I'm reading through these posts, and I'm thinking so many things in my head. And he says, let your words be few doesn't just mean physically. I was like, oh. Wow. Let yeah. your words, <laughs> let me write that down in the comments. Let your words be few doesn't mean just physically. Okay. And All right, brother, brother. Yeah. Please give the rest of that on the next time. Could I, could I have you back on the next one? We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. We'll definitely work it out. Hey, you guys, that's Avedon. You, um, you, should, you should subscribe to him. His YouTube channel has even changed because we didn't even mention this. Our YouTube channels used to be video game channels, you guys. And even oh, as yeah, I was preaching I, the gospel, I would put video game stuff in it. But we, God yeah, has been convicting us on those. I just, I, just, I just make music on Fridays. You just make music on Fridays because God is really, he's purged us of that and he's really changing it. So, you know, look and see what God is doing. He's doing a lot right now and um we're, we're gonna get into that brother it was an honor i greatly appreciate you great same here man thank you for having me on all right brother we'll talk soon